yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, Lord have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, Lord have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have not undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. in the desert to give drink 
to my chosen people, the people whom I form for myself, so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Yes, be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 126. Let us read in unison verses 1 through 7. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and in our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes.
to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. When Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common person who used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. regulations, we hope to set down nothing harsh, nothing burdensome. The good of all concerned, however, may prompt us to do to a little strictness in order to amend faults and to safeguard love. Like a student, in the classroom, each of us as individuals and this community of faith is called to a discipline intended to deepen and strengthen our commitment to Christ. The discipline has to do with nurturing a relationship, our relationship with God. It has to do with caring for those who are least among us. 
It has to do with developing a life of gratitude. For any of this to work, we must strengthen our ability to be self-critical, to look at ourselves with honesty. It is perhaps not an easy assignment. In our opening collect today, we pray, Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. That's us. It's not easy to be honest about and with oneself. We imagine that no one knows us better than we know ourselves. After all, we had to live with ourselves our whole lives. <laughs> Consider that all of us begin with an assumption whenever we're having some discussion or controversy, we begin with an assumption that we are right. Sometimes, I know, some have a default to presume that they're at fault and guilty. I've known that sort too. The reality is that sometimes we may be correct and sometimes not. But it's not so easy to tell which. When we speak, or when we begin to think about things, we necessarily begin to think and speak from our experience. But our experience may not be normative for this time, or this place, or this community. Consider an example from my own life. Many years, I can put it this way, many years ago, I was a young teenager. <laughs> My parents had just got divorced, and none of us four siblings were happy about it. The first time I ever went to court was at that time, shortly, sometime, about a year after the divorce. And I was, I was but a pawn in my parents' lawsuit, or perhaps I should say my father's lawsuit. The courts had granted custody of us children to our mother, and my father was suing for us to come under his custody. Initially, I was quite certain that I knew the right answer. Um, it probably doesn't hurt that I was the firstborn, and so I was pretty much in charge of things. I thought, along with two others of my siblings, that we ought to go with our father. Perhaps the judge would have been swayed by three to one in the vote, but at the last minute, I changed my mind. That left us children split two and two. Nobody was happy with that or the results. And in some ways, perhaps, it was two against two for a long time. Did I make the right decision? Or consider deeply held convictions. I have firm convictions about the need for Christians for us as a community, and us as individuals, to care for the least among us. I know that for several centuries in the early life of the church, that was one of the most important indicators of who was in the Jesus movement and who was not. But does that make my current conviction correct? I don't know. Perhaps I'm blind to the needs of a particular community community in our midst. Perhaps I don't see the whole picture. Perhaps I don't appreciate the needs of this particular faith community. Being self-critical is not always easy. And there's another factor to make it even more difficult. In the prayer, a reference to the unruly wills and the factions of sinners, Many years ago, I encountered an author who really changed my life. His name was M. Scott Peck. Some of you may have read him. His most famous and well-known book, The Road Less Traveled, The New Psychology of Love, Traditional Values, and Spiritual Growth. It has famously a wonderful opening sentence. It's a, a three-word sentence, and it's one that we all should learn and remember. It, it goes this way. Life is difficult. 
some of them have lived today in this way. There was another book, however, by Peck that affected me most. It was called People of the Lie, The Hope for Healing Human Evil. One reviewer said of it, people who are evil attack others instead of facing their own failures. Peck demonstrates the hammer these people of the lie work in the lives of those around them. He presents from vivid incidents encountered in his psychiatric practice, examples of evil in everyday life. This book is by turns disturbing, fascinating, and altogether impossible to put down as it offers a strikingly original approach to the age-old problem of human evil. Not only, it turns out, is it difficult to be honest about oneself, but there is in the world around us this pervasive deception, lie, and it has traditionally gone by the title evil. We see this at work in the gospel for today, Things may not always be what they seem. And the forces of evil will attempt to appear as something good. Jesus is at the home of his dear friends Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. Mary is anointing his feet in a gesture of reverence and love. Judas is critical of that whole affair. He says, the money could have been used to serve the poor. Indeed, and that's a good thing. And it's just the sort of thing that Peck, the psychiatrist, found in patient after patient in whom he encountered some sort of evil, a deception, people of the lie. In such circumstances, we must have a steady principle or standard to make judgments about ourselves and those around us. It is here that we need our companions on the way to provide a mirror or reflection on our own fallible eyesight and judgments. Many years ago, I first learned about the concept of intentionally cultivating a relationship like that with another person for precisely the purpose of developing honesty with oneself. It was the kind of relationship nurtured many, many centuries ago in the beginning of the Christian era among the desert fathers and mothers. A thousand years ago or so, the church in the Celtic lands developed the idea of a soul friend to be such a person. It is commonplace to call it today by the Celtic title Anam Kara. Such a friend provides a compassionate presence with another person, providing a mirror to see honestly into the soul of a person. Now, traditionally in Western Christianity, a spiritual director has been regarded as an essential guide and companion on the way. But the Celtic approach, the approach of the soul cultivating a soul friend, makes it less clerical. It affirms the notion that all of us who hope to be faithful Christians need companions on the way. With Isaiah, we can say that we shall thrive together. We can find hope for a new way of being, a new life, a restoration of what has been lost. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old, the prophet says. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And with Paul, we can say, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. And so we pray, as we prayed at the opening today, Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and the factions of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise. That among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed 
where true joys are to be found through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and proclaim our faith in the words of God. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. And we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God and the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, and of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and conscious life. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, where the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O oh God of steadfast love, you lead us and teach us with gentle strength, urging and encouraging us to live lives worthy of you. Accept our prayers on behalf of your creation and gather all people into your presence. As we pray, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good, God's mercy endures forever. You have called your church into the leadership of service. Inspire our generosity in word and deed that we may join in your work of reconciliation on behalf of the whole earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's mercy endures forever. You humble the exalted and exalt the humble among the nations of the world. Be with our leaders and all in authority that they may exercise their power in a spirit for compassion's sake. Give thanks to the Lord for the God is good. God's mercy endures forever. You are the source of joy and wonder. Be with those celebrating the anniversary of their birth wedding this week. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's mercy endures forever. You lift the burden of those who suffer and guide those who wander in desert wastes. Hear your children when they cry out to you in their trouble and deliver them from their distress and fill with your grace those who are ill or hospitalized, especially Jane, Arthur, Karen, Jonathan, Jane, Dick, Stephen, Deborah, Doug, Lori, Patrick, Nuris, Linda, Howard, Danny, John, Susanna, Colin, Patty, Terry, Deborah, Jason, Jan, Owen, Brian, Henry, David, Francis, Renee, Arlie, Walt, Claire, Matthew, Angela, and Chloe. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's mercy endures forever. We remember those who have died, remembering especially Margaret, Claude, Alice, Bonnie, Ray, and Margaret. May they move from glory to glory in your nearer presence. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's mercy endures forever. You bless the servant leadership of this congregation. Grant us vision and generosity as we respond to your calling with grateful hearts. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's mercy endures forever. 
God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace in the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, as your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children, at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. Lead us, O oh God, into your paths of faithfulness, that we may follow in the way of our Savior Jesus, and live always within the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations. Come up, you know, Lord.
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Thou send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Let us pray for the loving community of which we are a part. We pray in gratitude and solidarity with that part of our community that is scattered at a distance and connected virtually. We thank you, Lord of the Eucharist, for your presence in the most blessed sacrament. We receive your grace in bread. In the event that at this time we are unable to share in the meal in its fullness, we anticipate with hope the time we will be so able. We embrace and hold fast to your presence, which unites us through our time and space. We give you thanks. Amen. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this your people that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with a more perfect will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.